I was wondering, within the, within the climate change topic, there's a huge range of figures who are working on it. There's everyone from Al Gore to, to people who are saying we need an entirely new system and are trying to create new ways of, of living in order to solve climate change. And so I was, I was wondering what your thoughts are on if climate change can be solved within the current political and economic system. Um, it, can we meet this challenge within the, the system that we have, or do we, do we need, in a sense, a, a new system? No, uh, it is possible to deal with climate change within the current state capitalist systems by uh, carrying out measures which are pretty well understood. So one measure that could be instituted immediately is a carbon tax. A carbon tax would at least uh, internalize the costs that are imposed by use of carbon. It would, it would impose a great burden on those who use fossil fuels. And even mainstream economists say this is the easiest way to do it. That's not going to end the crisis, but it would be a major step forward. Uh, is there a carbon tax? Uh, not in the United States, even though, according to polls, almost half the population is, thinks it's a good idea. That's without practically anybody advocating it. If there was real advocacy, uh, in fact, almost all the commentary is against it. Uh, nevertheless, uh, almost half the population is in favor of it. And uh, th that could be a significant step that is certainly within the framework of existing institutions. Uh, this morning, if you look at the front page of the New York Times, it discusses a uh, conflict that's arising in the Democratic Party between two of its major constituencies, environmental and labor. Uh, the labor constituency wants support for uh, building gas lines like Keystone XL. The environmental sector of the party is against it, so there's a split. And you can understand the problem. It's one of the reasons why uh, the white working class is drifting to the Republicans, to their major class enemy, literally, to the party that wants to really smash them in the face. But they're doing it because, uh, partly because the environmentalists in the Democratic Party are opposed to things like the XL pipeline. Is there a solution to this? Transparently, but it's not discussed. We, this country needs massive construction work on things like decaying infrastructure or uh, uh, high-speed rail, uh, all sorts of things that require an enormous amount of uh, labor. The capital is there, workers want to work, uh, can be done. It's not even raised. All we can talk about is building pipelines. It's a sign of a, a social and political system that is so sick that it cannot face obvious issues and deal with them sensibly. So you have to tear the party apart over whether we're going to have pipelines when there's plenty of demand for labor and technical work, uh, construction work, uh, all kinds. I mean, even things like weatherization of homes, which is environmentally sound and could also be very helpful to the economy and provide jobs. Uh, a couple of years ago, the uh, government essentially nationalized the auto industry during the crisis, financial crisis, and took over practically the whole auto industry. There were choices at that point, but they were not discussed. The one choice would be, should we hand the auto industry after the taxpayer bails it out, should we hand it back to the old owners or clones, maybe different faces with the same basically the same people, and have it continue to produce automobiles. That's one possibility. Another possibility was, uh, should we uh, have the industry directed not to producing more automobiles, but to producing a, an efficient mass transportation system? After all, this is the, about the only country that doesn't have anything like high-speed rail, with a very inefficient mass transportation which is very costly to the economy and very costly to individuals. And should the industry be handed over 
to the old owners or should it be handed over to the workforce and, and the communities uh, as a democratic society would do. These questions literally were not raised except way out at the margins, like you know, I talk about them, a couple other people talk about them. But it's simply not part of the discussion. But it should be a critical part. I mean, it's kind of astonishing that uh, you can go from uh, China to Central Asia in high-speed rail, but you can't go from Boston to New York. In fact, the train from Boston to New York today, which is the pride of Amtrak, is maybe uh, 15 minutes faster than when I took it uh, 60, 70 or 65 years ago. It's a sh if it even makes it on time, which half the time it doesn't do. Uh, these, are, um, these are even burdens on the rich. Well, Amtrak is mostly business people, but instead of getting to New York from Boston in you know, an hour and a half, they sit around for four hours. You said elsewhere that in order to, to deal with the environmental crisis, uh, we're going to have to dismantle an entire sociological, cultural, economic, and ideological structure, uh, which is driving us to disaster. And it can so often be hard to imagine when, when we're embedded within a system of what an alternative could look like. And I was wondering, I know you don't have any specific thoughts on you know, what a society might look like, but do you have any general broad thoughts on the values or the overall structure that a society that was actually sustainable might look like? Yeah, it should be democratic. That's an alternative to our society. An alternative to our society is democracy. We live in plutocracies, not democracies. A democracy would mean that uh, every functioning institution, uh, production, commerce, uh, information, uh, all of them, it would simply be under popular democratic control. So uh, uh, industrial installations would be run by their workforce uh, in interaction with democratic communities. Is this a radical idea? You know, kind of, but it's also a mainstream idea. So if you take a look at the major U.S. social philosopher, John Dewey, straight out of mainstream America, I'm practically paraphrasing him. In fact, he points out that unless this is done, uh, politics will be, as he puts it, just the shadow cast on society by big business, which is pretty accurate. That's mainstream America. In fact, those ideas are not very much below the surface in ordinary people's consciousness. It's just out of the conversation. You cannot imagine democracy impermissible. Uh, but, but that is an alternative to our existing system. Uh, it's called, it's usually called libertarian socialism, but it's basically democracy. 